Good morning and welcome to The Mothership. Thank you so much for joining us on National Freelancers Day for a whole host of brilliant interviews and Facebook Lives that are guaranteed to help you and your business. Uh, joining me today, my co-host is Rachel Mason, the fellow Ipsy National Freelancer of the Year winner. Thank you so much for joining me and co-hosting today, Rachel. And of course, we're joined this morning by Adele Williams, Adele Williams of Super Funky Penguin, who is a familiar face for lots of us at Freelance Mum, but is here to talk to us today about how to make your business shine online, which let's face it, in this modern world of social media, it can be a little bit overwhelming. But how the devil do you make your brand stand out? So Adele, first things first, how do we, how do we identify? Do we, do we start with working on one platform or do we do the same thing for all platforms? How do we just begin that process? That is a brilliant question. I think the most important thing to remember is, and I, I know it's that phrase we all come across and it can be really tricky, is that ideal client. Finding that ideal client, working out who that ideal client is, it might be the kind of person you already know. So think about what platform they're using and focus on that one first. And once you've got that nailed, you can start to look across at the others. And, and expand but start off with the one where you think your ideal clients probably are hanging out because for me I, I, it's probably not TikTok for me uh, I think I'm getting a lot of um, interaction and, and feedback on Instagram so that's where I'm focusing most of my time and then I'm sort of scheduling the same post to go on Facebook but it'll be different for everybody so find out where your ideal clients hanging out and, and yeah speak to them find out where they are and go there Oh, that's a good tip. I find Instagram is the best one for me. That's where I meet most of my co-writers for songwriting projects. I find Facebook's better for like just people you already know. Yes. <laughs> they yeah. seem to be the ones who like my posts are like my mum <laughs> and they, you know, yeah. things like that, that like to know what I'm doing. But the people yeah. that you want to have as clients and as, as colleagues and things, I, I find anyway, for me, tend to be on, on Instagram. Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, so how do you, because some Instagram feeds look amazing and some look all right on Car Crash, don't they? And kind of like, oh, yeah. How do you I've, do that? You know? Yeah, I've been through all the phases of Car Crash and um, tying yourself into a pattern that makes your brain hurt. So I'm, I, I'm moving now to another pattern that's going to be much easier. I, I have, yeah, I've done the whole Car Crash thing. Um, keeping your images and what you're posting consistent is really important because if your audience gets confused with what they're seeing when they see you it's like it's different colors or it's different a different style different fonts um confused people don't buy confused people people like to feel comfortable they like they like they, they like a familiar blanket to wrap themselves in they like to they like you to show up and see what you've got and it feels familiar and normal and if you suddenly post something in different colors or with different fonts different style then it's sort of it's jarring isn't it i mean you, you probably don't even notice it be like mm, mm, okay and then you scroll on whereas if it's familiar and it speaks to you and you're used to it you're more likely to actually click and read um what what people have to say so yeah it's that keep it simple for you because if you make it too complicated you're not going to post as often as you should and keep it consistent and hopefully over time that consistency will really show on Instagram and your grid. Um, it'll be much neater, tidier and easier to scroll through. But I don't know, how many people actually go and click on someone's grid to have a look? Or are they just I, seeing the posts as they come up? It's, I, th I think it varies. I think it's, so a, it's I think, worth considering. Yeah, I tend to look at the post that's just come up and then I often go to their timeline to see what else. Yeah. There is. Yeah. Um, if there's something interesting, that's right. Yeah. 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 That's, um... So, yeah, well, what I was going to say is that that's where consistency really comes in. Because if you've grabbed somebody's attention, showing who you are and what you do, and they click through to, to see your grid and then go, well, hang on a minute, there's there's all these other things going on here. I Yeah, no. And then they click away and go somewhere else. So it's that, it's that consistency. <laughs> When you talk about fonts, Adele, and um, presenting things, are you talking about then creating some clever images in Canva and when we're and, and while we're on that subject is it also then about having this massive bank of stock stock images that are useful to then draw in on um because it can be really you know something it can be really difficult sometimes can't it to find 
oh what photo is it I can't have another selfie of me you know it's really hard to, to conjure up something again isn't it yeah well this is where I'm at the moment in a bit of a difficult spot because I've got a bit of an admission to make I'm in that problem with that situation right now I've got that problem where I don't have many photos of myself and yes it does make a difference I've actually got a photo shoot of myself booked um next weekend so hopefully there's going to be a whole load of new material but yeah um Canva doesn't have to be, you don't have to be clever with Canva. It's really straightforward. It's got all the templates there. You can just start off with a blank sheet and put a bit of text on to keep it simple. But keeping your fonts consistent. So maybe using, I mean, Lucy, Lucy will be the best, or Lucy or Ellie or um, Nicola to recommend the number of fonts. But I think three works really well because you can get different messages across and emphasize different things. But stick to those three. Don't then deviate on another font that catches your eye or that you've seen somewhere else that you like. Just stick with it. Um, so you've got that, that visual consistency. And then, yeah, having a bank of photos to draw from. How easy does that make your life? If you think about how you might be posting at the moment, you think up a message. You, yeah, there's that whole thinking up a message you want to say as well, which when you're posting every day can be <laughs> that can be a bit of a brain overload. Um, so you think up something to write and then you've got to find an image to go with it. If you don't have a set of images to draw from, where do you go? Well, you sort of maybe scrub about online, maybe go to Shutterstock, maybe see, yeah, or take a selfie. Um, but then you're missing that consistency and you're missing that focusing on the message that is you and what you're about. You're missing that personal aspect. If you have a brand photo shoot, you end up with a whole bank of images. So the, the um, shoots I offer, it's a minimum of 100 images, which is three months worth of social media content, plus a website refresh, which is pretty awesome. That's 100 plus images to draw from that's on brand. Every single one of those images is telling your story and giving your audience your message. So, yeah, the value of that is just huge, isn't it, if you think about it? Does it sometimes feel a bit, um, if I find Instagram in particular a bit of a funny old place because can it, you talked earlier about car crash, but it can feel a bit of a mashup, can't it? <laughs> but like you do want some lovely professional stock images, yeah. but then sometimes you want a bit of keeping it real. Yes. And how do you manage to um, cross the two without it feeling like a complete fudge? Yeah, that's a good question. I think using stories is a good one because um, that they're great for sort of, oh, I'm, I'm out and about doing something. Here's a picture. This is what I'm doing. Um, using lives, going live. So you're keeping it fresh and you're, I mean, lives are absolutely brilliant for actually showing people who you are in a very real way so they can hear your voice and see your gestures and get a good feel for if you'd work well together. Um, so that's great. And there is a place that I, I have to admit, there is a place for the, the app, um, arm's length selfie or selfie here and there if it's done carefully. And once you've got your bank of images, your professional images, you, you'll you have had a little insight into how they're done and how the setups are, but you'll also see what they look like. So you can set up your own selfies here and there to sort of fit in with that. And you can also use your, your text and your any graphics that you use to help draw that in as well. I wouldn't recommend doing that all the time, but here and there, as an in the moment, I'm doing this. Uh, so yeah, I'm at a freelance mum meeting, here I am. You'll get to you'll get a feel for how to position it and how to, to get it to fit in a little bit with what the professional photos show. Yeah, wow, gosh, it's almost, <laughs> when I started off on Instagram, I just posted anything you know, and I, I didn't really get what Instagram was. I thought it was yeah. a place where you could just store photographs. This was a few years ago, <laughs> yeah. of course. Um, I just put lots of filters and like it's gradually you kind of yeah. build up and people often say oh I really like such and such that you posted and quite often it's a professional brand yeah. series that I've had done and then it all matches so then it's like everything else to it does have you found it. have you found life a lot easier with social media since you had those photos done massively yeah because you know because we don't look great every day there's days that we don't no. wear makeup and you're like I'm going to post a selfie and I can't think of any what am I going to post you know and yeah you've got to keep that engagement and um it's amazing yeah I can just go oh I'll just pop this one up and write a post about songwriting or something what about for those of us who are possibly at the beginning of their business um and they haven't got the money at this point in time to spend on 
brand photography you know and let's face it that is it's a lovely thing isn't it but there might be other things at the beginning of your journey or at any point in your journey you think actually I, I sadly cannot afford this how can we keep that consistency without having to pay for a professional photo shoot every quarter you, you can do it yourself uh, if you have if you have a good phone or if you have a, a camera with a, a timer you can set up your own little photo shoot um, now I'm a, I'm a professional photographer and I've done a photo shoot of myself and I found it really challenging so I wouldn't necessarily recommend it but but some people will will take to that and it'll be fine to keep them going um, yeah it's it's a tricky one because it's one of those things that that really is an investment in your business so along with your um getting your logo sorted and your website sorted it's one of those things that that does need to fit in there somewhere but you're right what do you do when you, you haven't got the cash to start off with so yeah i'd say keep it simple um for you want to keep backgrounds I, this is this is a bad example you want to keep backgrounds uncluttered not like the photographer has here um <laughs> keep backgrounds simple have a little splash of your brand colors in there um don't totally overdo it like if orange is your color you don't need to be in an orange onesie with an orange hat and you know waving orange flags but an orange mug you, you'll have seen it once you once you switch onto it when you go to certain feeds you'll you'll start to see those cues you'll start to see the tools of the trade the tools that people use so if you make jewelry or if you um create artwork paintings have your paint brushes your paints take photos of that it's, it's a lot easier to do sort of flat a flat lay setups than to get photos of yourself um so lots of natural light uh keeping it nice and simple try to to look at it with an artistic eye try to look at it like it's not your stuff you're looking at it through somebody else's eyes and lay it out so that it looks appealing um we all use computers keyboards phones you can very easily with a, a whiteboard or a, a simple table you can take photos of, of flat lays showing your tools you can take a picture of your workspace not if it looks like mine because that's tidy by comparison to this um <laughs> but yeah it's think you have to be a bit clever in your thinking and don't aim for 100 photos straight up aim for maybe 10 to start off with and then maybe each month set aside a bit of time to get a few more photos and, and build it up that way um yeah i'd again i'd say prioritize saving the money so that you can make that investment but remember that when you take on a professional photographer very often they're not asking you to pay everything up front there's there's payment plans available and the what you invest you will get back because you'll you'll be out there you'll be more present and more visible to your audience and to your ideal clients that's the whole point mm. so you attract more paying clients to you which is why it's so important it's all that investment stuff again isn't yeah. it it's, yeah it's so true um there's a lovely comment actually ellie thank you so much for adding your name as well your name didn't pop up so thanks for adding it um you, in, ellie uh, in case you're not aware of ellie bowie um and you yeah, sorry. designers so ellie thank you so much and um, we were talking about fonts just now and you said uh, less is definitely more with fonts you can create variety by using a light gold and metallic version of a font for example whilst keeping a really consistent feel if you're picking different fonts try and make sure there's a definite contrast in styles if they look quite similar it will start to feel untidy so yeah it's funny is it fonts say so much don't they I remember when we came across the lovely squirrely called pacifica font that we use for freelance mum was like yes that's freelance mum and i felt so excited because i could see suddenly yeah. see my brand um yeah. but it's amazing how all these things do help clarify your your brand and your positioning i do i i think i drove lucy mad with my font fussiness <laughs> i wanted a handwriting font that was really easy to read which uh apparently is, well it isn't that easy to find so we uh we had a bit of fun with that <laughs> So let's just say, for the sake of this conversation, we've all nailed Insta. Like, yeah. damn it, we're good. We've nailed Insta. We've got the best grids going. We're consistent. And we know that our ideal client hangs out there. But we also know that some of them might be hanging out on LinkedIn. How the devil do we then pick up that platform and all these oh, lovely fair. brand shoots and put it over there? 
You might be asking the wrong person about LinkedIn. <laughs> I, I'm, oh, I try. Every so often I drift back over there and post something and then think, I don't know. Um, LinkedIn is much more about those solid connections and interacting with each other, I think. Um, if, if there's a, an expert out there, please feel free to, to correct me. But it's, it's more about, it feels like the more people you connect with on that, that one-to-one, that you know, first level, um, the more interactions you'll get with what you're posting. Um, but obviously you've got to go out there and comment on their stuff. And it's much more like with Facebook, it's like anybody can come and find you and lurk and comment. And with Instagram, you've got the hashtags, they find you on the hashtag and they comment. But with LinkedIn, it's much more, what was it? There was some awful number about how many new connections you're supposed to make every day. And it, it scared the pants off me, to be honest. Um, <laughs> it's, yeah, exactly, exactly. So yeah, it's about being careful and uh, deliberate about who you're going out there and reaching out to and making those connections with. And there's also a lot to do with um, sending them an actual message and making that connection personally, rather than just putting stuff up and hoping people see it. So it's, it's, it feels to me much more involved, which is why I, I'm, I've stuck my big toe in and that's about it. <laughs> So let, would you still use all that same brand stock photography? Would yeah. you still think, do you know what? This is just as appropriate yes. for LinkedIn. Yeah, as absolutely. LinkedIn. Maybe more so. It feels like more a professional network. Mm. I know it's changed a bit since the early days, but it feels much more professional. So if there's anywhere that you are going to stick with the carefully crafted professional photos, it's going to be LinkedIn. Um, and there's a lovely banner for that you can... can like like with Facebook has a banner, Instagram doesn't, but LinkedIn has a lovely banner where you can showcase one or two photos, three photos, um, so that when people click through and have a look at you, they, they get that image straight away. Yeah. So, yeah, it, I'd say it's more important, really. <laughs> Are the images that we use on social media different to the images um, that we should be using if we've actually got, like, printed material? No, the same. You've got to be consistent, Faye. You've got to be consistent <laughs> every step of the way. So if you have an image on your um, business card, if you have flyers, if you're going to appear in um, publications, keep it consistent because if people find your flyer or read about you in um, Bristol Magazine, they're going to come online to check you out because that's what people do, isn't it? Oh, this sounds interesting. Get your phone out, have a look. If they're then seeing a different style, or if they're seeing photos that, that look different, if you look different in the images, um, so if maybe maybe you feel like you look better 10 years ago and you submit to a magazine a headshot from 10 years ago with different hair, different length hair, different color hair, and then people click through and look at your website or check out your social media and you look totally different, it's that jarring feeling again. It's you're losing that familiarity and you lose that trust. So it's, it's important to be consistent and be current so that in all the different places that people find you, they're getting the same message. They're getting the same visual input. So would you say kind of playing on your, the things that make you unique are quite a good thing to go for? Because I guess, you know, there'll be, there'll be a lot of photographers out there who yeah. essentially do the same thing. You're all, you know, yeah. slightly different skills, but something that makes you, you is a thing yeah. that, I mean, like, I know because we, we, we hired you to do um, a photo shoot of our children and my parents and they just have yeah. the best time. Lovely. You're exactly the right person for that because you you you're so much fun and you do things in a really casual way um and all of your branding shows that so it was just like yeah clearly Adele is the right person it, and, and you were and um so it's I get that so do you find that sort of playing that up makes it easier yeah. to get the right kind of clients yes Th thank you for those really kind <laughs> words by the way that's lovely <laughs> Shows, shows the system works yeah it's your um it's your unique selling point isn't it it's by moving away from stock images and um that that inconsistency by putting yourself at the forefront of your business you're automatically showing everybody your unique selling point you're showing them you that i mean that's it that's it's you it's your personality it's how you work and yeah there's there's loads of photographers out there we all know how to use our cameras hopefully um, we all know how to use our cameras we we've all got experience with clients doing you know different types of shoots but it's the clients that will find me to be right for them will have seen me online they might have met me in person 
they'll have chatted to me or they'll have seen me talking and they'll feel comfortable and they'll feel drawn to me. And you don't get that if you use stock images, you're not telling your story. I've got, actually, I have got a really cool little story about a florist, yeah. if, you, if, you, if you have a couple of minutes. Yeah. So imagine <laughs> you, have, you have 50 pounds to spend on some flowers for, it's actually your mum's birthday, special birthday, 50 quid to spend, and there's two florists on the high street, and you think, oh, what shall I do? You know, you go check out the reviews, you go have a look at them. Uh, you find them both on Instagram. One florist has lots of pictures, gorgeous flower arrangements. They look absolutely stunning. The other Instagram account has also got photos of gorgeous flower arrangements, but it's also got pictures of the florist. You can see her doing some arrangements. You can see her in the shop chatting with the client. Um, maybe there's a little video clip of her uh, going to the market and choosing the, the flowers to, to buy. Um, there might be a few shots of her walking the dog because we're showing your personality and what you do. And here and there, there might be a shot of her with their children because it's a family run business. The children might be in the shop helping. And suddenly you've got this real feeling for this actual, real, authentic person, small business, family run business, doing a job. Who are you gonna spend the 50 quid with? Yeah, definitely, yeah. The, definitely the family run. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> now that's a one question, yeah. It's all well and good saying this, Adele. I mean, I know the likes of um, myself and Rachel are not camera shy. In fact, <laughs> yeah. we probably gravitate towards it. Um, but not, not <laughs> it's is true, isn't it? Come on, let's be honest. We're not, we're not renowned for hiding our light under a bushel, Rachel. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just getting ready. <laughs> not everyone is like that. So I appreciate we're a rare breed. And for a lot of people, a photo shoot is actually the sort of thing that gives them the heebie-jeebies. Yeah. What advice can you give to people for that? And also, whether you, you're in your comfort zone or not in your comfort zone, how can you prepare for a photo shoot? How can you get the best out of it? <laughs> Gin. No. Um, <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm on the, the side of I should be behind the camera, not in front of the camera. So I absolutely understand the fear when somebody points a lens at you and suddenly you're on the spot and it's like you get really tense and just the thought of doing it can just be overwhelming and you think I'm, I'm not I don't need to do that nobody needs to see me you might be thinking um I don't know I'm, I'm an accountant I build websites like why, why does anybody need to see me but they do because people buy from people so it's worth pushing through that fear and um, out of your comfort zone, because that's how we progress in business, isn't it? It's not just with photos, it's with everything. You'll only move forwards if you push through your, your comfort zone. Um, but yeah, I would say the most important thing is to choose a photographer that you feel comfortable with. And you know, you, you know you like their photos too. If you feel comfortable with your photographer, it gets a whole load easier. Because if your photographer's making you feel nervous, your photos are not going to show the best version of you. They're going to show you, like, what she get me to do now? <laughs> I've, I've only had that once, and it was with a family shoot, and one of the people there was just like, I have no idea what's going on. So, yes, um, I, I most of the feedback, in fact, all the feedback I get from my clients is how I make them feel at ease in front of the camera. Um, I don't know if it's my dodgy jokes or sense of humour <laughs> or, or whatever, but, um, yeah. It's, yeah, it's your photographer's job to make you feel at ease and make you look your best. Um, and I think there's a, one of the fears we have about having our photos taken is very often the photos we see of ourselves are either arm's length selfies that we've taken, which that, that by the way, is not the best view you'll ever get of yourself. Um, but also it's the photos that other people take of us, other people who are possibly children, Possibly our uh, partners who may not be that great with cameras or friends. It, you might have photos from nights out, which you'd rather really didn't see the light of day. When you hire a professional photographer, if they capture any photos where you're talking or blinking or just, you know, putting a bit of a funny face or if it's a bit of a bad angle, you don't have to see any of those photos. You don't get to see them. You only get to see the ones where you look awesome. So yeah, I mean that's worth paying money for in itself, isn't it? <laughs> I love so, yeah, that. The, it's the the whole experience, the whole reason to hire a professional is that they will make you feel at ease if you choose the right photographer that you feel comfortable with. They'll make you feel at ease in front of the camera. They will get the best version of you. They'll give you direction. 
so that you know what to do. So I don't I don't heavily post people. I don't say shoulder this way, you know, stand this way, do this. All the all the typical things because I, I find that can make people feel more awkward. Um, but I do prompting, so I give people something to think about or something to do. And then I move me around to get the best shot, which I think seems to work really well. So yeah, it's it's finding finding the right person and going breaking through that barrier of oh I don't want to be in front of the camera. <laughs> On the notes of selfies, Adele, is there a way to get a decent selfie? Because every now and then I take a selfie and I'm like, oh my goodness, the world does not need to see that. <laughs> you know, oh can I grow my arm an extra foot? And is it that is it a jaunty yeah. angle? Is it there? Is it I just I don't know. Is there a knack to getting a decent selfie? Yes, but it takes time and it's it's usually it's not one where you're just going to go like that and click they're fun and they can look okay but people can tell that you, your arms there you, they can tell so you can get um little tripods for cameras little attachments for cameras to put onto for your phone to put onto a tripod or just a little tripod you can attach it to and they're they're really cheap on amazon um that way you can distance yourself properly from the camera and you're not because when you get the camera up here you end up with all sorts of warping. You're, you're, you're not looking, you know, the bits closer to the camera look bigger. And if you're only getting your camera that far away, noses, ears, side of face, they're, they're gonna look a bit odd. <laughs> so get distance between yourself and the camera, get loads of natural light onto you. Natural light's the best, it's the easiest to work with. Simple background, as I say, not, not like this. And um, slightly from above, not like, Totally, you see, you see, you see the, the teenagers, they're probably in their twenties now. They're like really up above and, and pouting, but slightly angled slightly down at you. Um, that That's the way to go. And just keep it simple. Don't try to be ambitious. Adele, that's great. Thank you so much. Really that's enjoyed right. talking to you today. I understand that you've got a guide or a download as well that you said you'd make available. I do. Right. Yes, so I've got um, a PDF guide that you can download for free and it's called How to Make Your Business Shine Online. And I talk through all the different kind of images that you need and that you can use to really um, make your business stand out on, in social media or on your website. You do realise you now need to turn that into an online course. And yes. Like, That'll be the next step. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been yeah. so online course it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what you need. That's what you need. I'll put that in for 2023. <laughs> yes. Adele, it's been lovely joining us today. You're going to be joining us again right at the end of the day, aren't you? When I you will. Announce, um, the Excellent winner of the Freelance Mum Photo yeah. Competition. I'm very excited because somebody is going to be winning a one night stay at Tractors and Cream. So um, do make sure that you join us live at seven o'clock tonight in the Mothership when Adele is back um, to come and announce the winner. So thank you so much. Um, coming up shortly um, at midday, we're going to be joined by by Dutza Gale about how to use TikTok for business, which I'm most intrigued about. Are you on TikTok, Rachel? No, I'm terrified of it. I don't know what it is. It just seems <laughs> frightening. A lot of teenagers. I don't you've, know. Got, you've got <laughs> half an hour and we have to do some homework. Um, but listen, <laughs> really looking forward to, uh, to to seeing that Facebook Live. And again, Adele, thank you for joining us. If you've got any questions you want to pop in the mudship, please do. And I just know that Adele will be about under the answering. So, uh, Adele, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you, Faye. Thank you, Rachel. Bye. Bye. Bye.